Actuators, like other process components, are susceptible to mechanical problems. Since an actuator problem can adversely affect the operation of a process, it's important to know how to identify actuator problems when they occur. The following discussion is not intended to enable you to isolate the exact cause of an actuator or control valve failure, but it can be used to help you narrow down the scope of a problem to minimize the effect it has on a process. Often, an operator can detect an actuator problem by looking at its valve position indicator and comparing it to the position called for by the controller. For example, if the position indicator is showing that the valve is closed, but the flow indicator on the controller is showing that the flow is still continuing through the valve, then the valve seat and disc are probably warm, allowing leakage through the valve. However, if the position indicator shows that the valve is open when it should be closed, the problem could be in some other part of the control valve or in the actuator. For example, a diaphragm actuator will not be able to properly position its control valve if its diaphragm ruptures or if air pressure to the actuator is lost. Loss of air pressure could result from leaks in the actuator around the diaphragm edge, from leaks in the air lines to the actuator, or from a crimp that blocks the flow of air in an air line going to the actuator. If a positioner is used on an actuator, its gauges should be checked to make sure they have the appropriate air pressure readings. Sometimes problems with a positioner can also result from a loose or broken feedback linkage, so it should be checked too. Regardless of the reason for the failure of an actuator or a control valve, there are some basic steps that can be taken to minimize the effect that the failure has on the process. Some actuators have manual operators on them that may be used to regain control of the process flow in the event of an actuator failure. While other actuators and control valves may have manual bypass lines around the failed components. Bypass lines can usually be placed in service by isolating the failed actuator's control valve and positioning the bypass valve to restore flow. When either a manual operator on an actuator or a bypass line around an actuator is used, it will probably be necessary to maintain communications with the control room to ensure that the proper flow rates are maintained in the process. Since there are so many different possible configurations that actuators and control valves can be arranged in, you should check your company's procedures before operating any actuator manually or on the bypass.